Hi, I'm sorry for the long wait between the uploads. I know it's been about two months since I last uploaded to my channel. And that's because, as many of you might know, I have recently, in fact, just about a week or two ago, uh, depending on the upload time of this video, just released my debut single, Rainbow After The Storm. And I've been spending most of my time in the past two, three weeks, or actually two, three months working on it. And hence, I haven't really had the time to record a new video. Anyways, I was thinking that today I'm going to do kind of like a breakdown of the process of me writing this song, as well as the breakdown of the track. And, and aside from that, I also like to give you guys kind of like a general direction of where my channel, my YouTube channel would be heading towards in this upcoming year, as well as some updates on what to expect in terms of my music or some video content. So without further ado, I think we should just jump straight into the video. Hi, this is editor Heeman speaking, and I've realized a couple of things about this video. So first of all, this video is definitely too long for an average viewer of the channel to sit through. So I've put timestamps in the descriptions that link to more important parts of the video, such as updates on what I'm going to be doing with my YouTube channel this year, as well as certain more important parts of the video, such as the explanation of the lyrics of the songs or looking through old demos of the songs. And second of all is the fact that my filming time and condition was far from ideal. And what happened is that I managed to film from late afternoon all the way into evening. So the sunset happened while I was filming. So the lighting conditions changed dramatically in the video. So if you do notice that, try not to let that distract you. But aside from that, um, let's get back to the video. Hope you enjoy. Let me talk about how this song came to be, how it started in the first place. So it's actually quite an interesting story because so what happened is that one of my friends actually sent me a video, uh, an Instagram post from an artist named Leve, who, by the way, makes really amazing, timeless, classical jazz kind of music. So you should definitely check that out if you're into that. And the clip was basically of this piano composition that she made. And I found it really beautiful. In fact, I'm going to put the clip up right now so you guys can have a listen to it. This is what falling in love sounds like. So I really liked this piece and so I tried, I really wanted to figure out how to play it. And so I went to my piano and I just played around with it. And essentially I found the chord progression of this song. And I'm going to, I'm going to show kind of the progression on the screen right now. So if you want to play it for yourself, feel free to. But yes, I found a progression of this song and I thought it was really amazing. So what happened is that my friend actually sent me this clip around the Chinese Valentine's Day, which is May 20th, if I'm not wrong. And so during that day, a lot of couples were kind of posting all kinds of sweet and romantic stuff on their stories and Instagram stories and so all their social media. And so I was kind of just sitting at home alone with my own piano. And I was just playing around with it. And I was playing the chord progression over and over again because I really liked it. And I tried playing it in different styles and eventually I settled on kind of a jazzy kind of bossa vibe on it, which is what made it into the final song. And I opened up Logic Pro and I just started playing and the lyrics kind of just flowed out of me actually. I actually wrote the lyrics, most of the lyrics in one, one sitting and I was just playing and I just wrote out the lyrics. And in fact, I have a draft file of what it looks like and I'm just going to show it to you guys here.
So as you can see here, I have a project file here called Romantic Song Demo. And this was the project file that I used to kind of lay out the chords as well as write the lyrics. So I already have it open here. And I'm gonna just show you a little bit of the demo because, and bear with me, this is this has my own singing. And as I have said before, my singing is not the best, to put it mildly. So I'm going to just play a part of it, maybe just um, the verse or maybe up to the first chorus. And you guys can have a look at what the song originally sounded like. Love is not a picnic and, a blue blue and I remember something quite interesting being that I was trying to sing this softly because I was doing this quite late at night and um, I didn't want to wake anyone in the house. My voice actually sounds half decent here, so that's a bonus. So if you just listen to the chords, you know this is just... Love is the Days after the storm, the choice to stay after all. Yeah, so essentially this was just kind of how the song sounded in its first ever draft. And the melody is actually interestingly quite similar to what we ended up with in the final, with just a few changes, very small changes in the melody line as well as in the timing of the words in the final product. And after this demo, what's interesting is that I actually didn't think of continuing this song because I have a lot of projects that I just write on a whim, this one included, and I just leave it there because I don't think, I, I, I didn't think that it was going to be good enough to be a full song. I just left it there. And what's interesting is just a few days after I had done this, and I'd almost forgotten about it. I actually fell sick and I was stuck at home. I couldn't go to uni to attend my classes. Nothing much to do. So I decided to actually open up uh, a new project file and begin to actually compose the full instrumental for this song. And I'm going to show you the first ever full instrumental draft for this song. And be warned, it's very, and I'm stressing on the very, very different from how the final product currently sounds like. So let's dive into it and just have a look. So I'm going to open up the main project file and that's because the old version of the song is hidden within the main project file as well. All right, well, we're kind of waiting for the project file to open up. I'd like to talk a bit about the meaning behind the lyrics of the song. So Rainbow After the Storm was written, as I said earlier, around May, which is the Chinese Valentine's Day. And I wrote this song as kind of a reflection of what I think love is. And I think what is really beautiful about love is that it's the commitment to kind of stay together because I don't think love is just an emotion. I think love is a choice where people choose to commit in a relationship and stay together. And this applies to not only, you know, romantic relationships, it applies to your friendships, you know, even relationships with your parents. It applies to everything. And I think that's why I find love as being more of the beauty that comes after you go through storms together, which is why I named the song Rainbow After the Storm. And rainbows, of course, as most people know, they only appear after storms or rains. And it's a really beautiful sight to see because you know you've gone past the rain. You know you've gone past a period of suffering or trials or anything. And you can just see this beauty, which is why I made the song Rainbow After the Storm. And that's what the main chorus is talking about, you know, um, taking in all that you see, like just seeing someone for who they are, the good side, the bad, the ugly and everything and still loving all of them. That's that's why I think, that's what I think love is. And the verse is kind of filled with a lot of these small romantic gestures. So kind of things that most people think of when they think of the honeymoon period, where people first 
kind of get together in a relationship. And I'm not saying that these things are bad. Obviously, these are also an essential part of an, a, a relationship in order to you know, uh, help people fall in love with one another. But of course, I think what's even more beautiful than that is that after these things, people still choose to stay together. And that's essentially the meaning of my song, Rainbow After the Storm. As you can see here, we have the main project file. And you might notice that there's a lot less, perhaps, instruments than you would probably expect. Let me just move this into full screen. Yeah, so we have just the audios. And you can see that I actually had multiple takes of the audio because I wanted to present a version, uh, a demo that was that sounded at least decent enough in order to give to a singer to review. So let's dive into it. The intro, the, the structure of the song, interestingly, is similar is similar to the final. So we have the intro and then verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and then an interlude and then repeat of the parts and then an outro. So I'm just going to play, I'm just going to dive into it. And I'm going to pause it right here because as you can see, most of the instrumentals like these, all three of these are piano sounds and they're just literally the same tempo, uh, same rhythm, sorry, looped over the entire song. And it was just um, kind of messy. And I apologize for if, if the song sounds out of tempo, out of beat at certain parts because... I, I honestly don't know what I was doing when I made this. I made this almost six, seven months ago. And now when I listen back to it, I feel it's just so rough and just not ready to be seen by the world. But nevertheless, here we are. So it was a very simple instrumental, just looping the piano. And over, over here, and I think this might be the pre-chorus, I had a saxophone come in. Hi. Yep. So there's that and there's a really funny part in the chorus and I I'm debating whether I'm going to put this in the final video because it's so embarrassing for me but I'll I'm just going to play this part and I'll I'll let I'll let you figure out what's going on. Love is the rainbow that stays after the storm the joy to stay. Yeah, so I distinctly remember this part being a little too high for me to sing. So I had to kind of stretch my vocal cords to reach. And it didn't even reach on the note. It reached slightly below the note. And yes, it's just it's just a mess. Yeah, so the chorus just goes on like this with just that one part being super high and super embarrassing for me to listen back to. Yes, and... So it's the same thing, and over to the interlude. Let's have a listen. I actually quite like this uh, interlude part because I was very into horns at the moment. At the moment, I mean, at, at the time when I made this song. And that kind of translated into the final song we had more of but it was more of like a full horn section in the final song, whereas here it's kind of individual instruments, mostly just a saxophone on its own. And yeah, so the second part of the song, I think I just added some kind of coffee shop. I think this coffee shop is kind of like the Logic, one of Logic Pro's percussion samples. And um, we have upright studio bass over here and then just some strings. So... Together, this is how they sound it. I just cringe at my voice every time I hear this part. The boys who 
those hearts to one girl to dedicate and you can really hear that a lot of things are not on the beat it's just slightly off so it's just a very messy very messy project in general and in fact this kind of messiness is what made me choose to redo the whole project i remember that one day i just woke up and i opened the project file and I started listening through and i spotted the tempo problems here and there and i started to realize that there were too many things that were clashing in the song and it was just not a coherent project in general. It was very messy, very, very difficult to mix. So I kind of remember, and I think it still might be here. Yes, it's still here. So I grouped all the tracks in this uh, old version up in the one. I named it old. I, I distinctly remember I just closed it. I pressed mute. And then I just started a whole brand new project. So this is the original instrumental. And in fact, if I'm not wrong, this was the version that I sent to my singer. So while we're on the topic, let's actually go ahead and talk about how I contacted Zoe and how she ended up being the singer for this project. So I met Zoe around, I think, December of 2020 when she first came on to collaborate with me on the Christmas medley cover. And she was a friend of my friend from college, Daniel, who was playing the guitars in the Christmas cover, which by the way, if you haven't checked out, you definitely should. Although it's a bit far away, well, it's not really far away from Christmas, but it's, it's worth listening to. It's one of my favorite covers that I've made personally. But yeah, back to the topic. So I met Zoe around December of 2020 and we collaborated on the Christmas cover. And as I was doing this song, I was envisioning a kind of very chill and very relaxed kind of vibe. And at first, I, I didn't know who I was going to approach for the song. And all of a sudden, I actually, I thought of Zoe and I... Actually, what I did was I went online and I looked up several videos of her singing. And the more I kind of listened, the more I thought, all right, her voice is going to be perfect for this song if I do end up making it. Initially, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to approach Zoe because after the December cover, we haven't really been in contact too much. But I thought, you know what, let's just go for it. You know, if, if it's meant to be, then it'll happen. If not, then nothing will happen. So I just just sent it, sent this demo to her. I told her, you know, I, I wrote a cheesy love song. Would you be interested to kind of feature in it and be my vocal for this song? And, you know, fortunately, she did ab agree to be on this project. And and as I was sending her this, um, this demo, I told her that I would redo the whole project because I definitely didn't want the first initial version to be the final version. So I said I, I was going to redo it and I was going to do it in a different style. And she agreed to sing for it. So then after that, shortly after that, I started doing my first demo of the song. And yeah, so after she agreed to sing for the song, I did... Let me just show you. All right, so here's my folder for Rainbow After the Storm. As you can see, we have all the way from mix 1 all the way to mix 9. And there's actually a lot more than 9 mixes. It's just that there were 9 that had enough changes in them to warrant the file name. So mix 1, actually, the first mix was already very close to kind of the final product. There are several key differences between the first mix, and I won't go through each of them. I'll just list the main changes. So the first difference would be in the intro. So I'm just gonna play it. Yeah, so the first 
makes difference the differences between this and the final obviously the first thing is the intro i had a much softer one i think it was just one instrument so it was just saxophone uh playing on the track and the reason why i had the final version as it is is because i thought it wasn't really a memorable enough melody so i ended up making a more like an easier to remember kind of hook and then having a full horn section to make it to kind of set the atmosphere for like the jazz band kind of vibe and then the second difference would be at I think let me have a listen would be I think yeah so the second difference is actually in the pre-chorus and this is where I had I think horns that were a lot more complicated and they were kind of clashing with the vocal. So I'll just let you have a listen. So yeah, over here. Yeah, and another difference would be the lack of the pause before the chorus. And I'll, I'll explain more about that later on. But yeah, those are some of the key differences uh, between the first mix and the final. So it, we went through countless of iterations, you know, talking about the vocals and the harmonies as well as the instrumentation, as well as the mixing. And I think this would all be better seen in context of the actual song. So I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull up the project file and I'm going to open up project alternative. So I'm going to get to the real final, which is obviously the final product of the song. And I'm just going to go through parts of the song and kind of break down the elements of the song for you. So we're here in our final project file for Rainbow After the Storm. And you may notice that it is a lot more packed than the initial draft, as well as obviously the demo. So I'm going to go through perhaps section by section and just point out the choices I made in terms of the instruments, the composing, and perhaps some mixing decisions. So a lot of my instruments in this project was played by MIDI. And I would definitely have loved to have live instruments on this song, but I didn't have friends, many friends who played horn instruments, and even those that did didn't really have a recording setup at home or were close enough to me for me to go over to their place to record. So the horns are all MIDI, the upright bass MIDI, the drum is MIDI, although I did, um, I think I did play it on an electronic drum kit. And then the piano is MIDI, but I also have a live recording of the piano. So let's break it down. I think I'll just show, first of all, the bass and the drum, because these are the simplest parts of the whole piece. So the bass, as you might be able to tell from this um, MIDI uh, graph, MIDI, MIDI picture, I'm not sure what you call this, but it is a simple walking bass pattern. And oops, the system overloaded. So anyways, that's just the bass and um, a majority of the parts are walking bass patterns, but there's some like, for example, the verse, the first verse, but it's just, oh, I forgot to just solo, solo this part. So some parts, Yep, so there's some parts that are like that, just plain one note transitions, like for example here as well. But most of it is actually walking bass. And the drums are similar in the sense that it is a very simple pattern. And then in the verse, it would be something like this. And then over in the uh, 
chorus. Yes, the chorus it'd be. Yep, so overall it's just simple patterns with some fills. For example, um, most probably the most prominent part would be entering into the second chorus where there was a break. Yep. So drums are really simple as well. And I kept these parts simple on purpose because there was a lot more going in the song. For example, we had um, we had horns and the whole horn section as well as some snaps and some bells. And then, of course, the piano and the harmony. So I didn't really want things to get too complicated, especially since I am a beginner in terms of music production and mixing goals. And I wanted to have a project which I was able to handle. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for drum and bass. Very simple. And yeah, let's just talk about the song from the start of the song. So we have the intro part here. Yeah, so essentially that's the intro, and I have a couple of horns layered here. So I have a saxophone, which I think is, um, let's have a look. Yeah, it's the saxophone from Contact, which is Native Instruments um, Contact Factory Library. And I have a trumpet, which is Logic Pro's own trumpet, which I really like due to the um, dynamic expression that it has. And then another another contact saxophone and oh sorry this is not, actually this is I think this is session horns yeah session horns, and this is actually what gives the whole section a, a a very like full horn section feeling. So it's not just one instrument; it's multiple horns. Yep. So it's the whole horn section playing this melody. And then over here, I have, I think, BBC Symphony Orchestra. I have the tuba playing about one or two octaves lower than this to kind of add to the bass of the whole section. And the piano is very simple. It's just the chords played. Yeah, so very simple intro section. And then over in the verse, it's actually even simpler. It's just it's just piano, bass, drums, and vocal. So Love is not a picnic on a blue blue sky. The sound of birds chirping in the morning. Yeah, and then over here into the pre-chorus, as if you've heard the song, you would know. If you haven't, go and listen to it now. But yeah, over here in the pre-chorus, I transitioned to a bit of, I'd say a bit of like a bossa kind of rhythm to add a bit of variation to the song. And this is where the harmonies of the vocals come in as well. So let's just have a listen. Got romantic dinners by the beach as we watch the sunset. So it's the walking bass pattern and then drums as well as the piano. Yep, so that's the brief chorus and then towards the chorus, the piano goes back to the simple just playing a single, just playing the chord because here is where I introduced the first chorus saxophone. I'm sorry that my mouse is kind of jumping around. The, the uh, connection on my wireless mouse hasn't been the best recently so occasionally you might see me reach up to touch the trackpad that's because the mouse is not working very well and this is one of the times so here's where i introduce like a saxophone so So the initial chorus is just piano and then the saxophone pattern. And I have here what we call ear candy bells because 
they are panned to left and right, and they are not as audible as other parts of the track, but they add a texture and a very kind of cute romantic feeling to the song. And that's why I chose them. And if I'm not wrong, these are from Spitfire Labs. Yep, handbells. And these are completely free. So if you like the sound of these bells, just go to Spitfire Labs and just download these for free. This is how they sound together. So I just have them playing slightly different notes. Or actually, I think it might be the same notes, just different timing of the notes. Yeah. So alone, they sound kind of boring, but in the context of the song, in the chorus, I'll just play a small part of it. Yeah, and here's also where, um, as you can see, these tracks are labeled. Um, yeah, my mouse is definitely not working well. I just have to use my trackpad. So these tracks are actually labeled Simon Harmony. And Simon is a friend of mine who very kindly agreed to help me do some backing vocals. And they're not very audible because I mix them in a way to kind of just boost the low end of this vocals in order for me to get a like more richer sound so yep so it's just backing vocals and harmonies which adds to the richness of the vocals and so shout out to Simon thank you so much for helping me with this project and yeah, so this is pretty much, I'd say, the chorus, what the chorus has. So just harmonies and then piano and then saxophone, bells and the usual drum and bass. And this leads to the next part, which is the interlude, which is where the piano shines. So I actually have the melody and the chord separated. So you can see I have um, the piano uh, melody on two lines and I actually split into two because on one of the tracks I put a reverb effect with slight delay in order to uh, kind of highlight the melody of the piano solo. And then I have over here ambient sound which is I think Spitfire's London Atmos which just gives this, I'll just let you guys listen to it, it's just this kind of cafe-ish sound which suits the vibe of the song. And it's timed pretty well because towards the end, you can hear kind of like a train sound getting louder right about now before it enters into the second verse. And I also have this um, cowbell sound that is syncopated against the main rhythm. So... Yep. And, and the piano solo... Right, so I'm just going to play all of these together to let you see how all the elements fit together. So you kind of get the vibe that you're in some kind of jazz bar or some cafe with a live jazz band and it's the part where the piano player plays his solo and the train goes past outside and into the second verse. And second verse is so I'm just adding layers to the song as we go. So second verse retains the initial piano, but now I'm adding a saxophone. So this saxophone is pretty much the same one as from the first chorus. So I'm just going to solo the uh, saxophone, oops, saxophone and just <laughs> Yep, so saxophone is added on here, and here's where I add my snap sounds. As you can see, I've named them Old Snap and then <laughs> Snap again. So it's just me snapping my fingers. Can't snap them very well. The funny fact is this took more than one take to do. So just just snapping off my fingers. And if you listen closely enough, you can actually hear the metronome ticking in the background because I was wearing these 
open back headphones when I recorded the snapping part and they just kind of leaked into the mic. But they were small enough that in the final track, you don't notice them. And also have here coffee machine sounds. And I'll be entirely honest, I think by the end of the track, these were at a point where they didn't make any difference to the track and I could have taken them out. And it's good mixing practice that if, if a track, if a sound or an instrument isn't making an audible difference, you should just take it out because it's probably building up some frequencies which you don't want. But I added it initially because I thought it's quite, it sounded like a pretty cool <laughs> ambient kind of sound. That's how it sounds. Yeah, so together, verse two. And in a pre-chorus, and this second pre-chorus is my personal favorite part of the song. And it's a combination of, uh, like, the reason why I think it's the favorite part of my song, it's because it's just a combination of the lyrics as well as the pattern, the rhythm of the horns and the piano and the bass, and as well as another element which I'll point out in just a moment. So let's have a look at the horns first. So... So if I open up my automation, you can see that I've had to make a lot of cuts in the volume so that they go down and up. And that's because aside from the horns, I also have this part. Uh, it's I, I needed guitars out playing in a band because a part of my lyrics says, you know, the guitars out playing in a band. And then that's where I kind of introduced this electric guitar feel. What do you call it? A feel like a lead kind of thing. So... So uh, where is it? Yeah, it's coming up. So I uh, this part I have. Yep. So that's a, another element in the pre-chorus. And aside from the horns and this guitar, um, the piano is just a typical one holding the one chord because I didn't want it to add too many elements to the song to, and it would be difficult to mix if I did that. So the transition into the pre-chorus is also one of my favorite parts of the song because of how the drums and the piano and the horns interact. So let's just start from there and go through the pre-chorus. The guitars come in. This is the break that's in the song. And this is what I mentioned that I would talk about earlier on. And this break actually came quite late in the mixing stage. And this was at a point where I was mixing and I realized that I had too much reverb on everything. That means on repeatedly listening, the song would get really fatiguing, very tiring to listen to. And I thought, you know... Let's give the listeners a break from the song, an actual break. So I put in an actual break in the instrumentals. And if if uh, I'm not wrong, I can open up the automation. You can see in my instrument bus, which is where all the instruments are routed into, I actually put an actual break in the volume. So it's kind of like a break and then let the whole chorus, the big band, together with the strings come rushing in together. So that's the story behind the break. It was added, I think, less than a month or two before the song was finalized and released. So, yeah. So the chorus is pretty simple. So as you can see from here, chorus haunts, I actually lower down the volumes because I want to fade it out and make space for the strings, which are coming in. And the strings are very simple. So I'm just going to play. I have two tracks, two tracks of the string. One would be the main melody, this one. Yeah. And then the second one is kind of, it's 
it's at a very low volume, but it's the harmony to the main melody of the strings. So, and together is what they sound like. Yep, and else, aside from the strings coming in, I also have the bells come back in and they have a slightly different, slightly different pattern from before. Yep, and um, so on the left, it's kind of like a descending kind of pattern. And then on the right, it's similar to the initial pattern it had. Yep, so the bells come back in. The horns are still there, just softer. And it's a build up to the chorus and then the piano part is just similar to before. So the piano kind of really takes a back seat aside from the piano solo and the initial parts of the song. So you can try to listen for each element over here. You might hear it, you might not hear it, but put together this is how it sounds. And the outro is essentially the intro with snaps, added snaps and added bells. And we have another small part of the uh, piano solo which ends off the song. Voila, this is the breakdown of my song Rainbow After the Storm. If you like what you saw or if you like what you heard, search Rainbow After the Storm and add my name to it to your search term on any streaming platform and you'll find our song. Feel free to listen to it and if you like it, please add it to your playlist, share it to your friends, spread the word about the song and uh, so more people can enjoy it. So yes, that's essentially the breakdown of my song. So I'd like to cap off this video by perhaps talking about where I think this channel is headed in in the coming few years or maybe just the coming year in general. So as many of you might know, this channel actually started off as a hobby, a cover channel where I make instrumentals and I get my friends or just just people I meet online to come and sing for these covers. And eventually I started doing my own instrumentals and I released a Chinese song in 2020. And now I have my own uh, debut song out on Spotify, Rainbow After the Storm. And I think ever since that one AI video which I made last year, which went kind of semi-viral, I've been considering making more long format videos and I think that's what I might do. So obviously I'll need you guys you guys' help on what kind of topics you're really interested in learning about and I'll try my best to make that happen. So I'm thinking for this channel, I'll do more long form content. So whether it be tutorials, experiments or just exploring music production in general. But I'll also keep the covers because I feel like that's an essential part of the channel and what started it off in the first place. And I still do really enjoy creating instrumentals for covers and having my own interpretation of songs. So covers will still be a thing. It may no longer be a monthly thing unless, unless I can fit things in. So covers and of course, original music. So I have a couple of more songs which I'm kind of working on and I plan to put out within this year. So stay tuned for that. And of course, aside from my original songs, I'm always looking for perhaps more other musicians or 
artists to just collaborate with. So if anyone here in my channel has is interested in collaborating with me on a project or just anything of the sort, feel free to email me or just send me a DM on Instagram. I'll probably respond faster there. So yeah, I think this is pretty much where my channel will be heading. It'll, it's just going to be a combination of everything I've done before, but I'm hoping that I can step up my production quality in this year and just make uh, videos that are better in general for you guys and just better content, better. So yeah, in general, I think this is where I'll be, you know, pushing my goal so yeah, I think in general, this is where I'll be kind of heading with my channel. So it'll be kind of like a combination of everything I've been doing before. So obviously I'll still have my covers, but it'll probably be less than um, what it was before. And I'll have some long form videos where I explore uh, different aspects of music production, as well as interesting news or experiments, which can be done all related to music, of course. Or not, we'll see. And finally, there's going to be original songs as well of my own. And So yeah, I think this is where I'll kind of be pushing my channel towards in the upcoming year. So I'll of course still have my covers, although it might be less covers than before. I still enjoy making them, so I'm still going to continue making them. And of course, I'll have my original music. So I've already put out one song and I have a few more songs that I'm planning on putting up in the upcoming year. So stay tuned for that. And finally, I'll be looking into doing more long format videos. So, you know, experiments like the one I did with the AI or perhaps tutorials of some sorts if, I, if I'm confident enough about teaching things which I know about music production or maybe just, you know, random videos exploring music production, you know, things maybe even I haven't tried before. So in general, just more long format videos. And I think finally, this is something that I'll be addressing to, you know, everyone watching this video. I'm really looking to connect with more people who do music, who make music, who are artists, or just in general, enjoy music production, composing, songwriting to collaborate with. And if you are interested in doing a project together, just, you know, DM me or shoot me a quick email and I'll, I'll see what I can do about it. Yeah. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown of the song. And if you like the song, please go ahead and stream it, add it to your playlist, share it to your friends. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.